and welcome to the book club. This is where we take a look at books written by the man of God, Reverend Dr. Chris Oyakilome. My name is Helen King. I am Tayo Nisola. I'm Hannah Bonsi. And today we're looking at the book, Recreating, Recreating Your, Your World. world. Okay, okay, okay. So we've been recreating our worlds. Yes, we have been. Are you sure? Yes, definitely. <laughs> what have you been doing? You know, no, we just stopped complaining. You stopped <laughs> <laughs> You just went straight for that. Straight, she went straight I stopped for that complaining. One. Stopped complaining. <laughs> we learned a lot about complaining in the last episode, yes, we right? Did actually, yeah. Complaints being like uprooting the seeds of the confessions that you've made. Mm -hmm. You know, complaining as is is a is a is a defect in the confession, in the confessions you've been making, the yes. positive confessions. You know, we spoke about filling up your clouds with waters, you know, oh, yeah. and you know, making it rain. But complaints is like poking, just putting pins and holes in it, mm. and just having the waters leak out, just like that. So we learned so much about how um, complaints can delay the the filling up of your clouds, and how it's also your responsibility to have your clouds filled up with. You know, with with words, with right words, with the right confession, so that when it's time, it pours out itself over your life. Oh so wow! Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, just like I said earlier on, yeah, the complaining. <laughs> but I don't know. It's because it's something that I've just um, consciously been, you know, putting into practice mm. and making sure that you know, even if I come across you know a situation mm. whereby you know it looks like you cannot by just complain, complain about, about it. it. You know, there's situations yeah. like that. You just have to say something you know negative about it. But we learned in our last episode that instead of you know complaining, you know, find a solution. Instead of using your mind to think about the complaints you can also use your mind to actually create solutions create concerning solutions. that yeah. situation so that's just what I'm that's actually so beautiful still a complaint create a solution absolutely for it. Yeah, yeah you know our man of God Pastor Chris told us when we're reading the book mm. that you know mm. you can only make a change by doing something about the situation he made us understand clearly that you know complaining does not change the mm. situation so you can say you can point out all the bad things as much as possible because sometimes we will think if I tell them what is wrong then they will do something about it but Pastor has told us that we can do something about any yeah. situation. And that if you are in the mindset of just talking, mm -hmm. then go ahead and just talk. But don't expect that the talking or the complaining is going to change the situation. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between that and recreating your world. Mm -hmm. You know, otherwise God could have said, oh, the book of Genesis, about the first chapter could have been the chapter of description oh, yes. of yes. all the bad things. Like say, yeah. and, but, it's this, but if you notice, it just says, and there was darkness upon the face of the deep and this will happen and the next thing and god said like and immediately god, exactly, he yeah. went into action he could have said and there was darkness upon the face of the deep mm. because the devil did this thing and mm. then it was destroyed and then everywhere looked so gloomy and then mm. god was like why does it look so gloomy and then they could have had that long conversation about it mm. but he didn't do that he just said and god said let there be light yeah I'm like wow <laughs> Amazing. And, yeah. and there was light. And there was light. <laughs> and it was and next thing you see is and it was good. And it was good. It was good. <laughs> so he was like, okay, this is not I don't want this. Let's do this. And the next thing it was good. And he continued to create. Mm. He continued to create. And after every creation, it was good. And then after that, he rested. He, rested. he didn't need to complain anymore. Yeah. He put everything in place. So but what about the people who might say, but that's God? As he gets so I mean as, as well. Oh, that's just a perfect verse. That's a perfect verse. I wish I could as come he, over and high five you. No, as he is so <laughs> we in this world. Why, why not? Yes. Why not? Because we are the also the Bible says ye are gods. Yeah. Ye are okay. gods. Ye are gods, you know. And we're not the the reality of Christ in you yeah. and Christ in me is the fact that we can also you know bring up these attributes of God in us and yes. we can actually manifest the same things of God. No, we're also talking about, while well, I was talking about recreating your world, we spoke about imagination as well and how that's a gift from God and that's a God, it's a God attribute to be able to imagine things and be able to, you know, change a situation. Yes. God saw that there was darkness and he must have thought in his mind, the next thing to do is bring light. Like, yeah. what, what can we do about it that can bring light? So he imagined it and said it, let there be light. So if God can do that, just think about it, you can do the same as well. What's stopping you? We are gods. Absolutely. Glory to God. And, and you know, he could have said, whose responsibility, whose responsibility is this? Is it? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Who, whoever destroyed this thing should come and fix it back. <laughs> I'm not yeah. doing anything. Yeah. You know, but he didn't do that. Mm -hmm. He just he went into action. And that same spirit mm -hmm. is at work what in is us. Is at work in us, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I just wanted to also just say that, you know, our mind, God gave us our mind for a reason. Yeah. It's yeah. a special gift. You know, yeah. a lot of people, that's why, you know, you can't just 
go about thinking anything that you want, thinking mm. unnecessary things. God gave you your mind to bring forth solutions, to, th to think for solutions. Yeah. So you must actually be conscious that my mind was given to me to actually think the right things and to actually, you know, create the right yeah. thoughts and bring about the right solutions. Mm. So your mind was given to you as a gift from God and you need to use it wisely. It also brings to mind that the fact that you've noticed something that needs a change means that you can almost definitely do something about it. Yes. You know, God, God, like just, you just rightly said, who was responsible to change it? <laughs> who was responsible to bring the light? God was the one that saw that there was darkness and was like, okay, then I'm going to Because there, there are a lot of times people see things and they say, it's not my responsibility. It's not my responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. But have you looked within yourself? Can you actually do something? Can you actually create something? Can you... Can even even if it's not the whole thing, but can you start something? Yes. Can you begin? Can you inspire someone to start something? Mm -hmm. There is always something you can do. Yes. There's almost always something you can do. And Otherwise, I remember, we can't recreate our world. We, we can't can. recreate exactly. You no, know, exactly. I mean, I remember a message by the one of God when he says that the problem came to you because what well, you have the solution. solution. Yeah, the solution. So the solution is inside you. That's why the mm. problem, you know, gravity. So you should actually be very happy. You have to. When the problem comes to you, it's not a time for you to run away. You know, you can say to yourself, "I can, don't want this yes. problem." <laughs> but it came, it came to me because, you know, when you look deep, in, deep inside you, you do have the solution for mm. that particular situation. It's just um, um, saying it back to what you were saying, that someone can come to a problem and they be like, this does, has nothing to do with me. Like, yeah. like, Is that sister? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, exactly. I've done my part. But if you look within, the solution is inside of you. It's actually funny. I was just yeah. thinking about that. I was, um, I was having a conversation with my cell members and I was like, some of the confessions you made, you, you understand that that's why you're facing some of the things you're, you're facing. facing now. And like when you're saying, I'm a solution center, don't you understand that? <laughs> for you to be a solution the center, problem. problems, have to come. problems actually have to come. If, if you open up a shop and say phone repairs, yeah. what's going to happen? People are going to come bring their broken, broken phones. phones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So God has put a signboard on your head saying okay. this is the solution. <laughs> solution, 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 solution woman, solution, solution man. Woman. Yeah. You are the light of the or world. I'm so in right. my life, making broken people. <laughs> I know, they're right? coming for you and you're like, leave me alone. Why? How about you actually call yourself? I'm the solution provider. I need to take a moment just to digest that. <laughs> when pastor is singing, that means in some songs, if you really don't want to be involved, if you don't want to be, just, just keep quiet. quiet. <laughs> just, just keep quiet. But we are not of that. <laughs> no, that we do not give quiet. So, yeah. I want to spend my heart many months. Mm. Many, when they come to you, they are calling like, you 12 times a day. They <laughs> are like, what is this? Can you leave me alone? <laughs> broken situations, you have to really take step. Oh, wow, this is so yeah. interesting. But, well, this, of course, this is all what we're learning from the book. Yeah. Yes. Recreating your world. world. So, just in case if you do not have a copy of the book, Recreating Your World, here's how to get your copy. And once you get back, we'll start reading. Looking for a one stop center for all books authored by Pastor Chris Oyakalome, including books for kids and early readers? Look no further. The Rhapsody Bookstore is located on the Rhapsody of Realities app. Download the app now and enjoy books on faith, divine healing, prosperity, and many more. With a well-archived store, beautifully arranged in topical format, you can easily select the book of choice under the topic of interest. Select, purchase, and view in your library anytime. The store is located on the menu. Just click and you're in. Visit the Rhapsody of Realities bookstore today and get updated with God's Word for you and your family. God bless you. All right, welcome back. I'm sure you have your copy of the book now. And are we ready to read? Yes, yes. please. Are you sure? Okay. Yes. I'm ready to learn more. <laughs> and chapter four says, the prayer of the creative human spirit. Prayer is important. It not only serves as communication with God in terms of fellowship, but it also affects your life in many other ways. Prayer can shape a man's future. It will determine the kind of things that will happen or will not happen in a man's life. This is why it's important to learn to pray effective prayers that achieve results. To get a clear understanding of how this can be achieved, reference will be made again to the book of Genesis, the account of God's creation. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 to 2. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, 
and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. The Amplified Version says, In the beginning God prepared, formed, fashioned, and created the heavens and the earth. The Spirit of God was moving, hovering, brooding over the face of the waters. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 2. The words created, moved, and made have distinct meanings that influence the comprehension of these scriptures. Move originates from the Hebrew word rakhav, which means to brood or to flutter. Its particular implication, however, is to relax. Therefore, when the Bible says the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water, the best synonym for move will be brood. Brood means to sit over something so as to hatch or to bring forth. If God was sitting over the earth, it means he was brooding. And if he was brooding, that means he was relaxed. Since moved imply being relaxed, that tells you that the Spirit of God had a plan. He was brooding over so as to bring forth something. At that time, there was darkness everywhere. The world was a chaotic mass. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. 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 <laughs> it's just that was it took, it took me back. I yes. felt like I was there. Yeah. You know, brooding. just with, with watching the, the Holy Spirit <laughs> brooding. brooding. I love the way the man of God, Pastor Chris, actually made it sound in this. It, it, it just yeah. gives you so much light and so much positivity. You know, yeah. when you use the word brood, normally it's very gloomy. Yeah. Mm. In, in a context, it can make it very gloomy and very. I was brooding, I was brooding over that situation, oh my god. <laughs> but here he's saying it was relaxed. Yeah. And it just brings to mind that, like, be anxious for nothing. Even if you have to think about a situation or you have to brood about it, it's not from a place of worry mm -hmm. or a place of anxiety or a place of, um, oh my god, it's looming darkness or no. something like that. Very relaxed, but in a place of rest. A place of creativity. A place of creativity. Hi, you know? Kaya. It, it, it completely gives a new meaning to brooding. Brooding, so, yeah. To, because just like you said, to someone, brooding could have been, oh, you're brooding, stop brooding over the situation. In yeah. other words, the person has been thinking and thinking, thinking. And, you know, it's getting themselves even worked up, upset, or even yeah. sad yeah. because of what they've been thinking about. But then here's God brooding. Yeah. His own brooding. It's, it's, it's another it's, level. It's, it's another it's, level. <laughs> So a different, <laughs> level. different level. Okay. Very Funny relaxed. enough, you know, when I I wouldn't even have thought that the word brooding exactly. could have such a mm -hmm. beautiful, you know, meaning. I've just like literally, cause you would, like you rightfully said, brooding kind of like sounds like a very aloof, but aloof. yeah, like sometimes sad. Like yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. But I mean, this is why you know we, we love our man of God so much because when you read. When you read the books of a man of God, your vocabulary even expands mm. and you learn so much. And it's just so beautiful to know that, you know, God himself was just so relaxed. He wasn't like, like you rightfully said there, mm. it's not like when he came and he saw the situation when the world was in a chaotic mass, he started panicking or he started thinking, oh my God, like how is this going to be solved? But, you know, he's the God of the universe. He's the mm. creator mm. of the universe. He did it with so much, you know, he just called for light with so much like... <laughs> I've got this, like, you know, it's just like, just relax. Light, come. Come, <laughs> come forth, light. It was just like so easy. So in this aspect, you can just apply this to, you know, any situation that you're you're faced with. Yeah. You know, just because the situation come, came to you doesn't mean you have to start, you know, mm. panicking and start panicking, running around yeah. thinking that, you know, you don't, you don't serve a living God. You do serve a living God. So just put this into practice. When a situation comes, you just look at it. You just That's smile great. and you just relax. <laughs> you just call for the solution. And he just brood over it. Yes. He just relax over it. So this is just a very, very beautiful revelation that I've just learned right here. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, I love it when our man of God, Pastor Chris Yaklima, defines words in his books. Yeah. He gives us a very, a very beautiful perspective of the words he uses. And you, you can't but just admire and acknowledge that this man is is he's loaded by the Spirit of God. Ah. And wisdom and understanding comes to him by the Spirit of God. Right. Pastor Chris, worth hearing, worth reading. Worth, yeah. Literally, <laughs> worth hearing, worth reading. Let's keep on reading. So, continue on the page 25. Isaiah chapter 24, verse 1. Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty, and maketh it waste, and turneth it upside down, and scattered abroad the inhabitants thereof. Jeremiah 4, 23 to 26 confirms the situation of the earth at that time. It says, I, held, I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void, 
and the heavens, and they had no light. I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. I beheld, and lo, there was no man, and all the birds of the heavens were fled. I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord, and by his fierce anger. Mm. However, God was settled. <laughs> he had something on his mind that was settled, that he was settled about. His mind was fixed on something that he wanted. Though the earth was in disarray, he was neither double-minded nor unstable. Oh, hallelujah. Mm. The Spirit of God began to brood over the earth so as to effect a change. Now, Genesis chapter 1, verse 21 and 25. And God created great wells, and every living creature that moveth, which waters brought forth abundantly. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth. <laughs> The words created and made were used here, but they both have distinct meanings. Create is derived from the Hebrew word bara, which means to bring into being. In other words, all the things God created did not exist before that time. He brought them into being. Now, made, on the other hand, is derived from the Hebrew word asa which means to make out of previously existing materials. The two materials that were available to God were water and the earth, the ground. All he made was brought forth from the waters and the earth. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Make here is referring to shaping, fashioning, making from previously existing materials it was god's suggestion to make man so in verse 27 the bible tells us so god created man in his own image in the image of god created he him male and female created he them Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. as i was just reading this oh you see i could just put all i could just see is just just, I feel like making a movie. <laughs> <laughs> I feel well, like making a Genesis God, creation God movie. God is just so awesome. You know, so he, it's like he just created the world with just so much, with no, no struggles, no struggle. Mm -hmm. he, he was just, just at peace. It's mm -hmm. just like, you know, like what we were just saying, you know, he just comes and says, let there be light. You know, and there was light, you know, because when God says, it just, it becomes. So it, all I can just picture is, you know, just whatever situation you might be faced with, it, this is not the time to complain. This is not the time to murmur. The, the solution is inside oh, of you. you. And you can bring forth the solution without, um, without, without thinking too much, without, without, um, without thinking, Without, without with, worries. With, without, without worries. Or anxiety. Mm. Without anxiety. Mm. Yeah. The solution is just already inside you. You know, we said earlier on, as he is, so are we in this world. God himself is mm. living inside of you. Amen. You know, as he is, so are you. So you can just sit down, you know, and relax. You know, the scripture says that cast, cast all your cares upon him for he careth for, for you. Cares, yeah. It's just as simple. The word of God is just so easy mm. and so applicable. You know, if you just put this to work. I am certain that you will definitely come up with a testimony. So, just, just God Himself is living inside of you. You mm -hmm. can just, you cannot by just emulate Him. Yeah. You know, if He just did all of this in a world that was just like chaotic and there was just darkness everywhere, and He did, He made it look like so simple. Like the solution was just they're so mm. simple. He didn't start thinking, oh my God, like what are we gonna do? Oh my God, there's so much darkness. He just came. He just spoke, and everything just fell into place with so much. With so much ease, that's the word. So much ease, so you can cover, you know, 
it brings so us should... back to the power of words. The power of words, yes. Yeah. yes. The power of words. You, know, you said something so profound. Like, it was chaotic, it was this, it was that. And sometimes people think action mm. is like action. Yeah. 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 I need yeah. to do, take yeah. an action. Yeah. I need to do, 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 do And then sometimes you tell people, let us pray. See, this is not time for prayer. It's not prayer. It's time for, to mm-hmm. do action. To act. mm-hmm. And they, they even make fun yeah. of the person who says they want to pray. They make it seem as if, if there's a problem and you say, let us pray, pray. It, mm. it means you don't know what to you don't do. Know what to do. No, 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 no. This is it's very simple. What to do is very simple. We just need to do this. We just need to or they take money and throw at the situation, you know. But what did God do? It was chaotic. A chaotic mass. He used words. Yes. Words. Mm. Look at it here. He said the only two things he had was water and earth. And, earth. Yeah. Mm. and I'm like, this whole world came from two things. From two things. Water and earth. And he brooded over it and created. Mm. And here again, it's, the pastor said it was God's idea to create man. I'm like, mm. Mm. Sata, mm. Kali, mm. Protocol. Mm. Mm. you know, if you work in an organization where they say, what are your innovations for mm. the year? Mm. Mm. And you're thinking your innovations. God's idea was man. man. Yeah. Was man. Yeah. And to think of everything that man has done, I'm like, transhumanist, be humble. Because, because go away. Exactly, because <laughs> you don't understand. Yeah. You know, God's idea was man. There would have been no man if God didn't have the idea for man. You know, woman came as God's idea yeah. as well. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if I'm feminist. You cannot be more feminist than the one who had an idea to bring you forth. Yeah. So it's just, it, it brings you to a place of humility and understanding of the efficacy and the power yeah. that comes yeah. from the word of God. Mm-hmm. And why it must, you must never take it for granted. Yeah, it's also, it's also re, um, re-emphasizes the, the ability that everything is possible yeah. Yeah. the fact that we, we just got a newer revelation of make and created it just shows me that whatever your situation is if there was a previous version that you need god to he can do that yeah. and if you need a new one that has never been done before he can also do that so it just shows me that whatever situation you're in if nobody has ever been in that situation before god can create a solution specifically made for you for you so he can create something for you because he he actually said he he created and that means he created not from existing materials from something that was never there the wells he said he created the wells but the other things he said he made them so mean from previous materials from the earth and from the water so whatever it is whatever situation you might be going through just with this revelation of created and make you can create a new world for yourself it just gives us the understanding of the book recreating your world yes. you can create a new a new aeon if everything you think oh everything is upside down at the moment you don't know what's going on you can create a new aeon for yourself yes. oh hallelujah wow. to god wow okay we'll just continue um, with the book and this paragraph says in genesis chapter 2 verse 7 we see that God formed man from the dust of the ground. He did not create man from dust. Mm -hmm. He did not bring man into being from the dust. Rather, God created man in his own image. It was after bringing man into being that he formed man out of dust. Mm -hmm. God was therefore able to rest from all his work which he created and made as indicated in Genesis 2 verse 3. Genesis chapter 1 verse 11 and God said let the earth bring forth grass the herb yielding seed and it was so mm. looking at this scripture you think God just said bring God just said bring forth and the vegetation came forth however before he spoke he had been incubating deeply brooding over these things and meditating on them It was only after meditating that he spoke and it was so. Even when God spoke, the plants and trees did not just spring out of the ground. Because Genesis chapter 2 verse 4 to 5 states, When the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, and no shrub of the field had yet appeared on the earth, and no plant of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not sent rain on the earth, and there was no man to work the ground. That's in the NIV. God had not caused it to rain so the plants could not grow. Nothing appeared on the earth because there was neither rain nor a a man till the ground. The only thing that could have been 
there would have been a seed. Genesis chapter 1 verse 11 confirms that God said the earth should bring forth grass and fruit trees and it was so. Mm. Mm. Yet, in the above scripture, you discover that rain was needed for these plants to spring up. Every time God said, let there be, he was speaking, creating, bringing into being. The Bible testifies to this in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. God had been meditating, brooding over the earth. It was only after this that he spoke words of faith that brought all creation into existence. It all became a reality. For the Bible tells us that he saw that they were good. Mm -hmm. While God was creating all things, they were not physically tangible, but he created them with words. He spoke to the materials that were available to him. Which materials are available to you? What do you have with you? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Don't say you don't have anything. You just may not have observed what you have. When God spoke to Moses at the burning bush, he asked him, what do you have in your hand? Moses could have said nothing, but he answered, a rod. This previously seemingly, this previously seemingly unimportant rod became the rod of God that Moses used in performing miracles. God had the waters and the earth. He began to brood over the whole earth and finally, when his faith was fully mature, he spoke. When he spoke, the things did not seem to appear physically, but they appeared to him in the spirit world. He then took steps to put in place all he had said. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Creation is done in your spirit. As the word is spoken, it transforms your imagination into reality. Mm. Reality does not mean tangible, rather it means truth. It exists and is there, whether or not you can touch it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Have you ever heard anyone mm. write, you know, like this and bring in so much understanding, yeah. you know, to spiritual realities and, you know, one of the most important things here that Pastor said is, he said, do not let your, uh, do not be the one to say, I don't have anything. Mm, 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 mm. You know, where you are, God knows what you have. And this opportunity you're watching now, he may be asking you, what is it that is in your hand? What is it that you have? So that you know the right way to respond. And that's why we're here on the book club. That's why we read these books, so that we can teach you the right mentality to have you know, as we are led with the revelation that we receive from the man of God, Reverend Dr. Chrissy Akilome. But at this time, if you're watching and you are thinking, I don't even know who God is. I don't even know how to even begin this relationship. What do I do? I want to meet the name, the Lord Jesus Christ. Or you might even be thinking, does he really exist? If he exists, sh sh show up in front of me. Well, it all starts by saying this prayer. Now, if you're, if you're watching me for wherever you're watching me, just say this prayer with me. Oh Lord God, I believe with all my heart in Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. I believe he died for me and God raised him from the dead. I believe he's alive today. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life from this day. Through his name, I have eternal life. I am born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. I am now a child of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Congratulations. Congratulations. You are now a child of God. Yes. Now you can actually begin to start creating, recreating your world because you are now in Christ Jesus. Can you send us your name, your phone number, your home address to the details shown on the screen? We would love to get to know you personally and we would love to post out some 
more beautiful materials, especially written by the man of God, Reverend Dr. Christy Akilovin, to you. Congratulations. You are now a part of God's big family. Yes, you are. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. <laughs> Very excited. And on that note, that's as much as we can take on today's episode of the book club. And of course, we're looking forward to reading more chapters of the book Recreating Your World in subsequent episodes. But until then, my name is Helen King. And I'm Tyler Nisola. I'm Hannah Bonsu. I say God bless you. God bless you. Bye -bye.